Hey guys, Stephen Bogren here, Pro Physique. Today, what I want to talk about is sustainability. A shirt stained. Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Sustainability. What does that even mean? Why does it matter? What the hell are you talking about, Steve? <sighs> Oof, you know, man, I'll tell you what. If there's one thing I see quite often in the fitness industry, health, dieting, so on and so forth, it is a whole lot of vigor, right? People get in and they already can go. Like, like let's do this. Let's go. Right? We're ready to work hard. We're ready to... to put in the effort. That's awesome, that's great, and that's definitely a place we should be at. Um, however, we have to also keep in mind that we need to plan for the long term when it comes to our fitness goals. Um, this is especially true as a competitor, but even as somebody who just wants to be fit, healthy, and at a good maintainable weight long term. So what does sustainability mean to me, right? Because I think that, uh, and this is really, it's, it's kind of taking a page from one of my old professors from college. He said, your definitions of words <clears throat> will completely determine how you look at the world, right? Your definitions change your perception of the world. So it's important that we just define <clears throat> sustainability for me. And for me, sustainability is that I'm one, obviously able to do it in the long term, but two, still able to have the rest of the things in life that I love and I enjoy available and like realistic to me. <clears throat> so <clears throat> for me, sustainability means being able to include the other things that I love, right? <clears throat> so if I was no longer able to go out riding my motorcycle, that would be hard for me to sustain, to give that up forever, right? It'd be hard for me to sustain giving up drinking forever. Um, now, I, and I don't really drink during prep because it's not worth the calories, but I like the taste of a good beer. I like, you know, maybe a scotch or a good whiskey on the rocks. And so, since that's part of life that I enjoy, part of sustainability for my life is that I can include that and make that work. That is a big reason why I believe in flexible dieting, right? I believe that it is the most sustainable long-term approach to being productive and you're still making things work for your dieting. So sustainability doesn't just mean can I do this diet long term because now if I really wanted to, I could do a diet long term, right? I could give up everything else in life. But for me, that's not sustainable. Some people might be willing to do that. I am not one of those people. So understanding who you are, what you're willing to give up, and what you're not willing to give up is a very important part of making sure that we're gonna be able to sustain this diet long term and keep you successful, right? If I tell you all you can eat is tilapia and asparagus, well, that's probably not a realistic thing for you, right? <clears throat> Some people might be okay with that. Most people won't be. Now, if you're just doing it for a short term, say maybe we're doing a three, four, five, six month contest prep, maybe we can make that work for that short amount of time, right? So it's a time block, but then we still have to get back to that sustainability afterwards, okay? And we'll get a little bit more into the contest prep portion and sustainability in a second here. Um, but figuring out what is sustainable for you is a must. Beating the dead horse here, because <clears throat> I want you to get the point, right? <clears throat> that doesn't just come to food choices, things like alcohol and that as well. It also is gonna be things like how much cardio do you wanna to have to do to, to maintain your weight? If you're having to do six hours of cardio every single week, you know, to maintain weight, that's a lot of time investment. That might not be realistic for everybody. Now, same with me. I was doing about six hours of cardio. That is hard for me to maintain because there are a lot of other things I want to do. I want to do jujitsu. I want to ride my motorcycle. I want to go hang out, spend time with people I love and friends. And I want to take my family out to dinner, you know, stuff like that. Um, so for me, that's hard to sustain. Can I do it for a set amount of time? Yes. The answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. However, it's not something I want to do long term. 
can I eat 2,000 calories long term? Absolutely not. That is not how I operate, right? I have a very, little, like, my appetite is big. I've always been a smaller guy, right? So me trying to eat 2,000 calories forever isn't realistic. It's not how I operate. I'm not going to be successful with that because mentally it just doesn't work. <clears throat> so 2,000 is just a number, right? Um, that's about where I got down to for this last diet. For some people, where they get down to is closer to the 1,200 calorie mark maybe. Um, so remember, everybody's different. Everybody has to do something different to get there. But we have to keep that in mind because when we diet down and we do those extreme things to get to those low body fat percentages or to lose body fat because of our dieting history, whatever it might be, we have to do something to get us back up to a good place. Say so you're not getting ready for a show, okay? When we lose that body fat, we can't just go back up here. We put body fat back on. We know this. We see it happen with diets over and over and over again. We lost 30 pounds, we gained 35 pounds back, right? So we wanna look at sustainability. So not just sustaining our lifestyle, but sustaining that new lower body fat percentage, that new uh, body composition, right? Because <clears throat> if you can't sustain it, it was a lot of work for a very small amount of time, right? The trick is to be healthy and you know happy and feeling good about yourself for the rest of your life, okay? So that's the trick. So we wanna make sure that we are planning for the long term and how we're approaching the situation. So not only looking at the dieting phase, but looking at how the hell we're gonna come out of the dieting phase and still you know, <clears throat> manage to maintain a leaner physique, less body fat, get back to feeling good, having hormonal consistency, and having a, you know, a realistic calorie intake that we can maintain and still have the life we want with you know, all those other wonderful things. So let's talk about sustainability for competitors. Sustainability for competitors. Prep is not sustainable. We know that. Stage lean, not a healthy place to sustain. We know that. So let's not spend too much time going over that. I think what I really want to talk about for competitors is the sustainability of your training and then sort of your mental mindset, right? Competition and being a great bodybuilder. It's about consistency and time invested. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Even with genetics, it's consistency and time invested. Um, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. But when talent works hard, you are bone diddly. <clears throat> so, it's really easy to try and get into that sprint mindset, especially when you have a show and a show and a show and a show. If you're close, that might be that defining factor that gets you to that next level. Yes, absolutely. We did the same thing trying to get me ready for the last show, right? We said, hey, I know we've been working hard and we've been low calorie, been doing a lot of cardio. We have four weeks to get better for the next show. Now it's a sprint, right? Now we're working hard. That makes sense. You cannot sprint like that over and over and over and over and over. It just doesn't work. You get burnt out, your metabolism dies. Uh, like it adapts um, and like, like shit just gets nasty. So you really have to work on focusing on <clears throat> the main, the maintenance of it, right? How do we make this work on a regular day-to-day -day basis, still incorporating good life goals and not only have to focus on this very, this one dimension, this one aspect of life. Um, there's nothing wrong with having that be your main focus. There's nothing wrong with saying, I want to be Miss Bikini Olympia or I want to be Mr. Olympia, right? How you go about that and how you manage that can definitely affect a lot of other things in life. And so I think it's easy to be happy and to enjoy when the process is going well and you feel like you're making progress, right? Hard part being when you feel like you're not making progress or like things just didn't go the way you wanted. And I am a great example of that because I have, through my entire bodybuilding career, for the majority of it, been a loser. Um, I have, you know, placed eh, or I've placed way at the end, like I've placed last multiple times, third call outs, um, you know, a couple top threes, shit, whatever. Um, and so for me, I think learning how to deal with that was all about falling in love with the process instead of focusing so much on the outcome. Falling in love with the process is what helped me to be better. It's what helped me to stress less. Less stress going into a stage, 
you know, and getting ready means less cortisol, which means you look better, right? So whether or not I do well on stage, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna lift weights till the day I die probably, or until I'm broken and destroyed and just can't do it anymore, you know? Um, I, I just love it, I love the process. And I think that if you want to be successful long-term, you absolutely have to love the process. There is no getting around it and nothing else you can do about it. So remember that falling in love with the process, paying attention to that, enjoying the journey, and not necessarily worrying only about the destination is what's going to help you to be sustainable long-term in competing and being in, competitive in the sport. So that's it, guys. I'm gonna end it right there. Boom, done. I hope you guys like my two fucking degrees that I got sitting in the background and understand that RAF was the best ninja turtle.